Republican-led legislatures in some states across the country are pushing forward with efforts that they say will cut down on election fraud. But opponents argue that the measures will restrict voter access. Ed O'Keefe is following these developments uh, for us from Washington. Ed, this all comes as former President Trump is still repeating his claims of voter fraud in November's presidential election. That's right, Anne Marie. He and an overwhelming number of Republicans are now pushing GOP leaders to take up their concerns about the integrity of last year's elections. Remember, Iowa and Georgia were among the first states to rewrite their election laws. Florida's just done so, and Texas could be on the verge of doing so, too. We will win the Senate. Former President Trump and Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney are at odds once again. In a statement Monday, Mr. Trump said the fraudulent presidential election of 2020 will be, from this day forth, known as the big lie. Cheney fired back, tweeting the election was not stolen. Anyone who claims it was is spreading the big lie, turning their back on the rule of law and poisoning our democratic system. Cheney is facing primary challengers back home and could face another challenge to her position as the third-ranking House Republican, with growing calls for her ouster from colleagues upset she keeps fighting publicly with the former president. Recent polls show most Republicans agree with Mr. Trump. Seven in ten don't consider President Biden the legitimate winner of last year's election. And CBS News political analyst Leslie Sanchez says those are hard numbers for GOP leaders to ignore. This is less an issue of being loyal to Trump and more an issue of ensuring that the Republicans within their state feel that it's a fair and legitimate election moving forward. Now, Texas Republican legislators are debating proposals to stop elections officials from sending unsolicited absentee ballot requests, add stricter ID requirements for mail voting, and make it easier for partisan poll watchers to observe as voters cast ballots. People in America have lost faith in their elections and the outcome, and we have to resolve that issue. But election law expert David Becker says the Texas proposals would roll back voting rights. Texas was already one of the hardest states to vote in in the country, and they're trying to make it even harder. And last week, Florida Republicans passed a bill adding ID requirements for voters requesting mailed ballots, among other restrictions. If lawmakers want to increase the integrity of American elections, they should be encouraging early voting. They should be encouraging mail voting. Now, keep in mind the proposals up for consideration still in places like Texas, Michigan, and Arizona, still up for debate. So some of the more controversial eye-popping provisions could eventually get stripped out. In Florida, for example, there were ideas about completely banning the use of ballot drop boxes. Those got nixed. They weren't in the final bill that's set to be, pa or set to be signed by the governor. And in Texas, it's unclear whether they're going to ban drive-through voting, which was a very popular option in some parts of the state last year during the pandemic, especially in overwhelmingly Democratic Harris County, which encompasses Houston. Anne-Marie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we heard, we heard in your piece, David Becker, say Republicans should actually be encouraging mail-in voting. I'm wondering, is there not a concern that if you make it difficult for certain demographics to vote, that is also going to have an impact on the Republicans who want to come out and vote? Well, that's what is so puzzling to nonpartisan legal experts and observers like David Becker who say, look, traditionally, older Republican voters are the ones that have relied on mail-in options or absentee ballot options. So if you're gonna restrict or make it more difficult for people to get them, you are potentially making it more difficult for Republican voters to cast ballots, which could of course affect next year's big elections. Um, in his speech before Congress, the president, President uh, Biden, addressed the fight over voting legislation. I wanna play what he had to say. More people vote in the last presidential election than any time in American history in the middle of the worst pandemic ever. It should be celebrated. Instead, it's being attacked. Congress should pass H.R. 1 and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and send it to my desk right away. So Democrats have tried to address this issue on a federal level. There are some limitations when it comes to the federal government and voting, because states kind of are responsible for that. But um, where do those efforts stand? Well, they're, they're stalled, and it's just for that reason, because there's arguments mm -hmm. among Democrats and Republicans, some Democrats and Republicans, that this would go too far, that, that the federal government cannot mandate or restrict or, uh, you know, uh, put re regulations around elections the way they're proposing, because, as you said, this is usually a local or state matter. Uh, it is awaiting consideration in the Senate, where not every Democrat has signed on.
ones like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema a little more concerned about. Of course, you need to have 50, 51 plus. Uh, you need to get to 60, really, on procedural matters like this. And, and so it may not necessarily go anywhere. This is part of why Democrats keep pushing, some of them do, to end the use of the filibuster and make it easier to push through these kinds of proposals. But, um, you know, it remains to be seen whether it's something that could get considered later this year or some other kind of election reform legislation that maybe doesn't go as far. Um, so now let us move on to sort of the palace intrigue uh, within the Republican Party. You mentioned in your piece that some House Republicans are calling for Congresswoman Liz Cheney to be pushed out of her leadership role. Um, we, she has always been a very outspoken critic of uh, President Trump. You talked about the statement that, that Donald Trump released. and. Liz Cheney was right there on Twitter, you know, right back at him right talking about what the real big lie is, which is that the election was stolen. Uh, but we also saw, you know, the polling results in your piece about just the number of Republican voters who do believe that this, the last presidential election was, you know, illegitimate. So the GOP is hoping to regain control of the House in the uh, 2022 midterm elections. How are those political calculations impacting caucus leadership in the debate over this issue? Well, that's what this is all about, Anne Marie. I mean, they look at that poll, mm -hmm. ours and others, that say seven in ten Republicans don't believe he was the legitimately elected president. If you are in leadership and you are standing against 70 percent of your party, then most of your party is going to say you're not the best messenger necessarily to reflect our values and our beliefs, even if they're completely unfounded and based on a lie. So she very well, next week when the House reconvenes, face another test of her leadership. She holds the number three position. And it's the position that's most responsible for crafting the conference's message and sort of focus. So if this is a big concern mm. to base Republican voters and she's not reflecting that, then why would they believe, why, why, why would they leave her in that position is the argument that some have been making. But the optics, of course, would be terrible. She's the only woman in leadership. So if they were to find a replacement for her, many now believe it has to be another woman and somebody who didn't vote to impeach the president. Uh, and then there's the question of her own political future back home in Wyoming, where she's going to face primary challenges, fueled in part by the former president and his supporters who want her out of Congress. And are we he hearing anything from the other people in leadership in the party? I mean, Kevin McCarthy, no. uh, Mitch McConnell's in the Senate, but are we hearing anything from him in regards to her future? The ones to watch are Kevin McCarthy and Steve Scalise, the number one and the number two. Both of them have been noncommittal mm -hmm. about this vote, but certainly not providing the same kind of air cover they did for her earlier this year when she faced her first test vote. Mm. It is unbelievable. Um, you know, Cheney, that is the sort of a brand name in conservative politics. Um, I don't think anyone would have predicted that she would be facing, you know, the possibility of being ousted from a leadership position um, if he had asked, you know, a, a couple years ago. Um, Ed, thank you very much. Take care.